How's it going friends? Today's video is an answer to a question that we get in the comments actually pretty often. And basically we're gonna work through the decision making process of this question. What should I get? A single family home, a town home, or a condo? Let's get into it. How's it going my friends? My name is Jesse Lynch and I run the hardest working real estate team in the game. We're called To The Twin Cities and you can check out our website to thetwincities.com. But this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home, a place to land here in the beautiful Twin Cities of Minnesota. And that's whether you're just buying a house for the first time or you're relocating here from a different city, state, country, or even planet. Uh, I, I don't know why. That kind of, I get a kick out of that literally every time I think about it. Um, God, that'd be cool, right? Somebody from literally Mars was like, hey, I'm thinking about hopping down. <laughs> I don't know. That's ridiculous. Okay. Anyway, uh, first time home buyers, relocations, that's what we do. And that's what we do better than anybody else. So if either of those things appeal to you, then truly do me a favor, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified if you have not done so yet. So that way you can see every time we put up a new video, you can get alerted and we do hopefully the best videos, the most immersive videos on what it's like to live here in the Twin Cities. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment of any sort. I'd love to know other spots uh, you, you want to see, other questions that you might have about living in the Twin Cities. Either one, you know, any, any kind of engagement, and you know, the thumbs up, it's very, very helpful, not only to the video, not only to the channel, but to other folks, to people who are thinking about moving here or buying a house here. It just lets the video get seen and hopefully we can help more people. And uh, if you are one of those people who are in that position, then get a hold of us and we will crush it for you. Uh, you can go to our website, to the twin We have a contact form there. Fill that out. It'll take 30 seconds if you're really getting after it. Uh, or you can shoot us an email directly to info at to the twin We used to have a phone number and everything, but to be honest, it was mostly uh, kind of a waste of time. Um, so those are the definitely the preferred ways of doing it. So again, website to the twin email info at to the twin And they lead to the same exact <laughs> inbox. Uh, so it's up to you, however you want to do it. And we'll get back to you and we'll kind of get you headed in the right direction and absolutely crush it for you. The team, the guys doing so good. Appreciate them so, so much. If they happen to be watching this, thanks fellas. You guys are the best, uh, best at what you do. So today's video, we are talking, basically walking through the decision-making process of the following question. And this is, we've gotten a bunch of comments on this. So thanks for the comments. More comments like that are very much appreciated, but what should I buy? A single family home, a town home, or a condo? And there is there's a lot of stuff to consider. So let's just, let's just hop into it. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's just dive in. The way I see it, there's basically like nine greater categories to consider when you're deciding between single family home, town home, condo. Um, and you know, I can't just answer that question for you. So let's talk through what they all are. I would say to me, the number one, you know, discussion that you, if it's just you, then I guess this is like an internal dialogue that you have to have. If it's you and a partner, if it's you and uh, a parent, if it's you and a kid, um, sometimes there's like a single parent with like a 17 year old kid who has very strong opinions um, <laughs> and runs the show, uh, then these are just important conversations that you should have you know, prior to diving in. And that's not to say that you can't learn along the way. You definitely can. But I would say th this first thing, which is basically just like, what are your priorities and what are your non-negotiables, right? Like, what are you looking for out of the home that are like really, really, really high up on the list, right? Um, most people don't have that hard of a time 
uh, communicating this to us went by the time we're talking to them. But I would imagine that at some point, if there's two different people, you had to sort of come to terms on what are in fact the most important things. And I would say, I would recommend that you focus on, uh, there is, there's a few things that are basically like immovable objects, right? Like, like you, you could say this is a priority because there's no changing it, right? To me saying like, a priority is like a, a renovated kitchen or I need a walk-in shower. Eh, to me, that wouldn't be like top of the list. You can add a walk-in shower. Most people can, um, or if the home is perfect otherwise, it's like, okay, well, I'll deal with this like tub situation, but I'm going to be putting in a walk-in shower. Um, but the, the sort of immovable objects, the, 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 the powers uh, that are hard to control, number one is gonna be like area, right? Which, which has sort of sub uh, brackets, which are like, what are the schools like? Potentially you don't have kids, you don't care about schools, okay, psh, gone, doesn't matter. But for sure, area is gonna matter for certain things, proximity to work, right? Sometimes people will say, well, my new job is in X spot and I wanna work within 30 minutes of there or an hour of there or however, however much, right? That's gonna, that sort of immovable thing is is such a powerful variable that okay we know like well we're we're within this amount uh, of of time from this area uh, and then the same with schools too because some some folks more and more now people are working from home and they're moving here for better quality of life or to be close to family or something like that so maybe that point isn't where you work maybe that point is where a family member works or maybe that point is a specific school that you're like. That's where my kids are going, because, you know, <laughs> whatever reason, uh, they have the best ping pong team in the whole world, um, you know. So, yeah, those sort of immovable things. What are the priorities? And then, yeah, what, what are non-negotiable, right? So, I, I, obviously, I can't decide what those are. I don't know who you are, but you uh, hopefully, as you, maybe you write this down and you go, okay, yeah, what are those things? Like proximity to X, uh, Y, and Z. Um, maybe you're gonna say, well, proximity to work and then access to a uh, school that's rated seven or above or a, rated a B plus or higher or whatever. You, you know, those are the things where you go, okay, what are the priorities? You know, top three, top five things where you're like, these are just like, absolute must-haves because sometimes it's going to be uh if it depends on how specific those things are you're going to find you have a very broad sort of area or you're going to find ah if if you're picky uh and that's not a bad thing i i think of myself as a somewhat picky person for where i'm going to live um if if you have you know a high standard of school or proximity to maybe both parents and home or family member and home or something like that, uh, then that might only give you a sliver of the metro area, right? So I guess you know what those are, but those are to me are the number one thing to consider are what are the non-negotiables, what are the immovable objects and what are our priorities? And th so then the next step is basically like, it's, for some people, this is an, immo an immovable object. This is, you know, this is the priority. But some people, there's a little bit of room for wiggle, like a little bit of room for wiggle. Like nobody says that. A little bit of wiggle, <laughs> a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but which is just basically budget, right? Like, what is your budget? Because, and these things all play in tandem, right? So, you go, well, my budget is. X and I want to be in area where the schools are, you know, tremendous. And sometimes those just do not line up, right? Sometimes you're on, you you just can't do both, right? But a lot of times you can, or a lot of times you can, you know, you go, okay, well maybe not a, maybe I don't need an A plus school, maybe an A minus school would do the trick, or maybe I don't need a 10 out of 10 or a nine out of 10, maybe in seven or an eight out of 10 would be cool. Um, and and then how does that line up with your budget, right? And again, when we're talking, you know, in terms of, <laughs> I guess, you know, back to the, the the whole point of the video, which is the single family home, town home, condo situation. To me, the immovable objects are, are they have nothing to do with that part of it, right? They have nothing to do with what type of structure you're living in. In, unless, you know, that immovable object is, I wanna live in downtown. 
there's not a lot of single family homes like in any downtown anywhere in the country. So um, then that might automatically go, okay, no, <laughs> no single family homes. You only have the two left now. Um, and sometimes even townhomes are, you know, basically impossible, but maybe, maybe you can be right on the edge of downtown and there's more of like a row house style, something like that. But, uh, again, those are movable objects and you probably know, but we also, you know, we help people who are, who maybe they have a, a budget of like a million and they're like, we either, <laughs> we either want to live in a condo downtown or, uh, something 45 minutes outside with like some land, you know? And I mean, whether or not that's a hundred percent achievable or, or within their timeline or whatever, that is something else to be said. But there are definitely people who are like, I want this or this, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. And it's just a matter of finding the right one of those. Okay. And then obviously those immovable objects, those uh, non-negotiables, they, they might restrict you to uh, just a sliver, right? Even though you're saying, ah, oh, maybe 30 minutes from this area, but then once you factor in schools or proximity to a family member or something, some thing that you want to be near, then that might just go, okay, well, you have a much smaller area um, with which to work. Um, and then, so, so then area, like let's consider the area, obviously, beyond that for, for whatever reasons, let's say geographical reasons or something like that. And again, that's just going to be something that limits what is available to you. And sometimes that limit is actually a good thing, right? If you were just like, I can live anywhere. That's a little too much, you know, like for most people, um, especially if they, depending on what a budget is, if they have a tiny budget and they say I can live anywhere. Okay. That's probably good. Um, but if you have a, a massive budget or just like, oh, I don't really care if I spend, you know, X, Y, or Z, then it's, yeah, that gets a little bit complicated, a little bit, uh, just, you know, too much. The world is your oyster. And then you have a difficult time making any decisions, but yeah, then we'll figure out basically like what is the budget and what is available to you within that area. Cause again, if the area is the priority, if proximity to a school or work or whatever is priority, then you might have to say, okay, well, I can't afford a single family home within that area. I have to get, uh, or maybe I can't even afford a townhome. Maybe it has to be a condo, but again, maybe, uh, certain immovable objects about you do not suit those things. But I, you know, I think, I think we can, we can move on beyond basically like area and what is available to you within your price range in that area. If it can be any of the things then, okay, cool. Then now we have these sort of other things to weigh. So let's say you have the budget and you know, the geographic area and there are all three available. Okay. I know it took a while to get to that point, but I think that's the, the reality is like, well, not, you can't say I want a single family home in downtown. Okay. Like <laughs> it's not really a thing. Um, so, uh, let's say, let's say we're in an area where you, your budget affords any of those things. And you know, there's a housing stock of all condo townhome and single family homes. Then I'm going to say the, one of the first things that a lot of people consider is like, what, like how much house can I get for my money? Um, basically, and, and what condition, right? If I'm being honest, how shiny, how fancy can it be? That's, that's the reality of most people I sort of envision. I want to buy a home that is like, you know, done up to a certain amount, you know, or that is renovated up to a certain home uh, amount or that is new to a certain extent. Right. So that sort of like how shiny can it be within my budget? Well, that's going to be another really, that's a very common factor, right? Um, let's just say for just the sake of, you know, uh, an example, 600,000 gets you a very different single family home versus condo versus townhome, right? Those are different, almost always going to be different levels of like finishes. And typically this is not always the case. It depends very much on the area, but typically single family homes are most expensive. Townhomes are next and condos are next. And that's not to say that, uh, Epic downtown condo can't cost more than, you know, a single family home, some like anywhere. Um, you know, cause there definitely is that, uh, I would say townhomes are the most consistently in the mid range, you know, in, in the middle of those things, but as far as price goes, but often condition 
you get a much like nicer, more renovated uh, townhome for the same price or even a less price as what you would get for a single family home. Uh, so <clears throat> the condition, the shininess, that's definitely something uh, worth considering. And then next up, I'm gonna say one really important thing to consider is your lifestyle. And again, maybe that could sort of fit into that immovable object, but not really, you know, we find a lot of people who are like, it'd be cool if I could walk to a bar or something like that, but it's not gonna be, the home is takes priority, right? So, but if your lifestyle is, I don't have a vehicle and I have to walk to blah, 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 then, you know, not to say that single family homes couldn't do that, but a lot of times like a condo is gonna suit that a little bit more. But even beyond that, I'm gonna say, let's say take area out of the equation again, if they, let's say they're in the exact same spot, does your lifestyle suit uh, you, you know, fixing a single family home? Does your lifestyle suit you, you know, being your own handy person or, you know, having a relationship with a handy person who <laughs> can come in and take care of things for you? Um, it, does your, you know, mental bandwidth even allow for you to like, ah, we have this problem, you know, whatever, the washing machine isn't uh, working. Maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> the, the siding got damaged. Now I have to go deal with it. Um, you know, that, that thing, just, just that sort of the responsibility and the time that would go in to, you know, maintaining a home, but taking care of the yard in all facets, um, that is not for everybody, right? And if you have a single family home, it's inescapable, unless you're just paying somebody to do all that stuff, at which point, you're gonna to wanna to factor that into budget, right? If you have an unlimited budget, then yeah, I mean, you're fine. You, you, you can solve almost any of these problems with money, but most people don't. Most people are gonna, they're gonna be things that they have to deal with. So, you know, are, like, does your lifestyle suit just dealing with the maintenance of a home? Does your, you know, do you have a very demanding job? Does that, um, take a lot out of you does that even to some degree some people are like my job pays too well to justify me mowing the lawn you know <laughs> and that's that's i guess that's understandable right like there's probably a dollar amount to how much you could pay somebody to mow the lawn um or just my job you know demands too much out of me at the end of the day the last thing i want to do is think about taking care of my home right for folks like that i would say for sure a condo is going to be probably the like the best situation a town home would be the next because so for the most part let me dive into this part as far as like what is required of you in all these different homes a single family home that's your home you own the land which is technically actually the real estate a uh, little lesson and then you own the improvement which is the home and the buildings and the any any changes to it. So the utilities, the driveway or whatever. Any of those things are called improvements to the real estate. The real estate is just the land. So side note, let's get back into what we're actually talking about. In a single family home, you are responsible for all of that. You're responsible for the real estate and the improvements, you know, uh, the lawn, the, you know, sewer line, <laughs> like you, it, it's, it's uh, more in depth than a lot of people think. Obviously, the utilities, the um, you know, the, the furnace, AAC, any kind of situation like that. Um, you're you're responsible for the roof and the siding and uh, yeah, all, all of it, right? Single family home, you're responsible for all of it. Town home, again, right in the middle usually. Usually, a town home, you're responsible for all of the things inside of it, and there are some that don't exactly fit the situation, but for the most part. You're responsible for all of the things inside of it, but not the exterior. You're not responsible often for the siding, the roof, the maintenance of the lawn, because it is a community lawn. Um, and I guess that's usually it. Sometimes there's a, are you responsible for the windows? Yes or no. For the most part, I would say yes, you are responsible for the windows, but not always. Is there a parking lot? then in a townhome, typically somebody else is responsible for that, uh, and et cetera. In a condo, it, that's where you have the least amount of sort of responsibilities typically. Sometimes, so you, you're almost never responsible for the exterior of the building, the roof, the common areas, because townhomes don't have common areas. They're not gonna have a hallway, they're not gonna have like an entrance typically. They might have common amenities, like a pool house or something like that, um, but 
for the most part, not like a common area uh, in inside. But a condo, you know, you're you're not gonna have to you know, do any kind of yard maintenance at all. And then sometimes, depending on the situation, sometimes the condo uh, takes care of things like heat, AC, uh, water, trash, um, that kind of stuff, it's sort of the utilities. Sometimes even it includes TV, which to me is like, get rid of that, give me internet, right? Sometimes it gives internet and TV, but it's like, I don't wanna be paying an extra you know, X amount of dollars to have some like decrepit old TV, you know, set up through whatever, <laughs> whatever company. So I don't exactly, that one just kind of, I find just annoying because then it's like, here's your TV provider. And some people don't even use that, right? I don't, I don't have actual TV. And then, you know, both townhomes and condos often will have some sort of like amenities. I would say condos are more likely to have an amenity, sort of like an amenity building or an amenity area where, which would be maybe like a workout, uh, room or workout, whatever, gym, uh, duh. Um, <laughs> and then uh, you also might have like a pool, sauna, hot tub, that kind of thing. Um, you might have a, like a dog walking area or you know an off leash dog area or something like that. Uh, townhomes typically, I mean some, some townhomes will have stuff like that, but for the most part, townhomes have less amenities and more like a pool, May, may be sort of a gym situation, but you're gonna, it's just gonna be less extravagant. Again, a, a condo might have like a, a community bar or you know, just community rooms and stuff like that. Whereas townhomes might have some of that stuff, but it's just less likely. Um, and yeah, so which, you know, as far, so as far as lifestyle goes, which one of those appeals to you? Personally, I am not really like a common room user, right? Like I've lived places where they have them and I don't ever go in there. Maybe once a year I rent it out or something for a, hol <laughs> a holiday or something. And part of that is just cause like you feel like you should, you know, cause you're paying for it. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the, what, what is your lifestyle? If you are somebody who entertains people often, then maybe the community room or the, the rentable room or whatever, maybe that's amazing and that's everything you'd ever want. Maybe you do swim all the time or you do go hang out in the hot tub. Sometimes they're like roof, you know, swimming pools or roof hot tubs. I mean, it's definitely cool, but are you actually going to use that, right? Um, so that is, to me, that's like sort of sums up the lifestyle thing. Another thing to sort of consider as far as the lifestyle goes, not just like, do I want to take care of it, but would be, does my lifestyle suit uh, having a shared wall, right? Um, <laughs> I could go down a rabbit hole there, but my thought, here's where my brain's at, just so you know. Uh, I'm a musician and I like to play music. Uh, I used to have like, you know, play music like loud, like drums and stuff in the home that I lived in. Now I have a studio for that. But like some people are, you know, they want to have a home studio. It's a little bit harder to do that in a town home um, and, and very difficult in a condo. Uh, it, it depends on what you're doing. Certainly like live drums or like live amps, that's gonna be really tough um, to, get, <laughs> to get away with. But a single family home, it's gonna be considerably more doable. So, you know, do you have any kind of like hobby? Are you a mechanic, right? Do you have, do you fix cars in your garage? Again, a single family home is for sure gonna be the move there. You could maybe get by in a, in a town home and maybe if a condo had, you know, a, a, a stall garage with electric, maybe you could get by with it, but it's gonna be tougher for sure. So is there anything that you do that would like prohibit, you know, sort of a shared wall situation? Yeah? Okay, um, moving on to that, I'm just basically gonna say like the HOA, here's something to consider. Does, is an HOA just like a deal breaker for you? Some people it is, some people there, it you know, depends on uh, what that HOA allows and I can get into some of that stuff in the next sections as well. Uh, but a lot of the time an HOA will um, put sort of restrictions on what you can do to the home, right? Can you add an addition to the home? Can you add a fence to the home? Can you paint the home fuchsia? Can, you know, uh, but, but then on the other hand, something you consider, you, you might instantly think, well, that's annoying, I don't wanna do that. But maybe you ha are like, who would paint their house fuchsia? Some people, right? And if you don't have an HOA, maybe your next door neighbor, 
Okay, so that's sort of the the one of the biggest things to me as far as a, a, a pro con situation of the HOA. Am I the person who wants to paint my house fuchsia, or do I really want to avoid my neighbor painting their house fuchsia? Okay, then that is a big factor in do I like an HOA, do I not like an HOA? But then even beyond that, some HOAs will restrict breeds of dogs or amounts of pets or um, even p amount of people living in the home, right? So obviously you know your situation, you know like your goals and whatever, and obviously you know your situation, you know your goals and, and, and all that. So you should be able to determine that. But I would say just because you have a dog or a certain type of dog, don't say I can't do an HOA, but that might restrict which HOAs are gonna be up your alley. Okay, and then for the next two, I'm just gonna clump them together. Basically, I would say, what are your plans moving forward? What are your short-term plans? What are your long-term plans? And uh, short term, I guess I would say because is what you're about to buy, are you going to grow out of that instantly? Are you, are you like planning on having a child and you're about to go buy a one bedroom condo? You know, maybe not the best call. Um, <laughs> so something to consider. Or do you intend on, uh, you know, moving out very soon? Or do you, you know, is one of your family members going to move in? Are you going to need more space? That's really what I when I think of short term plans is are you very soon going to grow out of this home? Because that is a thing that people do. And a year later, they're like, shoot, we did not think <laughs> that we were going to need another bedroom or another garage or something like that. Uh, so in, as far as your short-term plans, yeah, are you going to grow out of this home very, very soon? So that's short-term plan. As far as long-term plans, do, you know, for one, do you intend to move anytime soon? I would say that that's not going to be that big of a, a factor, but it could be, and, and, and I'll kind of get to why. But some people buy, um, buy a property with the intention of, in a year or two, renting it out and buying another home, right? So uh, if, if that's you, good for you. Uh, and, you know, that's something that we can definitely, like, help you navigate to. Um, but with that, then you're sort of, you have to be pretty mindful of this property I'm buying. Yeah, I'm gonna live in it, I wanna enjoy it, you know, hopefully. But at the end of the day, I am buying it as a rental and it has to make sense as a rental. Um, and what makes sense as a rental very much depends on you. You know, some people would say, well, a rental has to cash flow X amount of dollars. Some people would say uh, that uh, a rental has to you know, maintain itself, break even. Some people would say, I don't mind paying into a rental a few hundred dollars every month, um, you know, into the payment and into maintenance because I believe in the appreciation play of it, right? And, and I think eventually the rents will catch up and then it'll have this pretty incredible asset. So, you know, are you going to rent it? So the reason that I would bring that up is basically some HOAs don't allow rentals, right? And, and beyond that, some single family homes don't make sense for rentals, right? If you, there are single family homes in like higher end neighborhoods where for certain people, if you're the person who's okay paying into it because they think this asset is going to appreciate um, a lot over time, then okay, that's a move, right? That, and I'm, I'm not here to like judge you on that move. If that works for you, cool, then maybe buy a more expensive one. Um, but if you're like, well, I don't wanna, if I do that, then it's, I'm gonna have a harder time affording the next home that I get. And so you're gonna wanna make sure that the home you buy is in an area where you're gonna you know, be able to get a renter, you're gonna be able to get uh, where the rent and the mortgage work out in, in your favor. And then beyond that, like I said, some, some HOAs just don't even allow rentals or they have restrictions on rentals. Probably the most uh, common restriction that I see, like on as far as rentals are concerned is, yes or no to short-term rentals. So if you have this sort of ambition to create an Airbnb out of it once you sell it, some are just like hard pass, no short-term rentals. And some municipalities are like that too. So, you know, uh, I guess be careful about the area as far as that goes. Um, but that's, you know, if the short-term rental thing isn't even on your radar and you're just thinking about like a long-term rental, then the big question is, does that HOA allow you know, long-term rentals. I think it's probably most of them do, um, but they might also have restrictions on what percentage of the homes uh, in the in the HOA can be 
rentals because they don't want it to turn into a hundred percent or like a 90 percent rental neighborhood because then the people who own it might lower their value etc so they put those restrictions on to you know hopefully help maintain the value of the home and the uh, desirability of the home and the hoa in general so that is the big one to me as far as long-term plans are considered are you going to buy it and then live in it for a little bit and then rent it out cool it's super doable and a smart play sometimes a condo in a in an urban area is like a really good move for that sometimes it's not sometimes uh, um, a townhome is in like a suburban area is like the move sometimes it's not it all sort of depends on do those numbers make sense and etc uh, last thing i'm going to touch base on the hoa again and sort of the uh, yeah, the, the, the things to consider about an HOA, and I can make a whole other video on this, but uh, I don't know if I can talk long enough about it to make it you know worth it. So let me include it here. Um, basically, what are the pros and cons of an HOA? You know, the big pros primarily for an HOA are, number one, you, uh, your neighbor can't make their house crazy. You know, that, that would be not allowed within the HOA. So they can't whatever make it a, a wacky house and thereby lowering your home value. That's probably the biggest reason for an HOA. Number two is they often will take care of outside maintenance, yard maintenance, street maintenance, that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes an HOA sits on a city street, so the street is maintained by the city, so it's not them doing that, but you know, uh, even yard and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's a, a huge, sort of pro for that. Sometimes too, they even do like background checks. So there's a certain uh, level of security to an HOA controlled area where, you know, you can't have a certain amount of, uh, I don't know, criminal record or something like that. Um, so that is a, a benefit for some people, obviously not a benefit for some people. And then last for the pros I would say is that they can supply amenities, right? So they can supply those common spaces, the pools and that kind of stuff. On the cons, uh, I mean, some of these are just different sides of the same coin. For one, if you have a criminal record, you might have a harder time doing it. If you have a dog of a certain type, um, potentially you'll have a harder time getting in there. Even, not even breed, but like size. They have size restrictions. Let's say you have three pets. You have uh, two cats and a dog. There are some places where they say two pet maximum, okay? so. That could be a bummer. Again, you're, you're limited on what you can do with the home. Uh, if you think you can get a two bedroom and then, oh, well, just add another bedroom, that might not be possible, right? In a, in a townhome um, or certainly in a condo, that's tougher. But that's not to say it's impossible, but it's, it's more of a challenge. Uh, what you can do with the space is more difficult. Obviously a condo, a condo HOA, they're gonna take care of the common spaces like the hallways and the entrance and stuff like that, um, but you have a hallway and an entrance, you know? You, and, and then the biggest thing for the sort of cons of not just HOAs, but condos, townhomes is that shared wall. That's, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. Um, and then sometimes shared yard and sometimes an unfensible yard, right? So if you have a townhome, sometimes they don't, well, I would say a lot of time, they don't allow you to fence your little section of the yard. So, which kind of makes sense if they have to mow it, that kind of makes sense because that would be a huge pain in the butt. <laughs> if you had to go into your little fenced area, you know, that would probably take everything longer and ultimately cost more. So these are the biggest factors to consider uh, as far as, you know, the three, the three big options. And, you know, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm sure I missed some stuff, you know, about maybe the, the pros and cons of the HOA or just different little things to consider as far as, the uh you know which home type to choose so i would love a comment i truly would love to hear your thoughts on maybe you've lived in an hoa maybe you had an awesome experience maybe you had a bad experience maybe things to look out for within the hoa um let me just throw this out here and this is something that we will tell you if you're working with us which we recommend you do um I'm just kidding um <laughs> but the budget of the hoa is definitely something to consider okay uh let's move on from that um, <laughs> maybe I have to do a whole HOA video uh, now. Um, but anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, about everything we've talked about uh, in a comment that would be very, very helpful. And yeah, I'd love to hear other 
questions or concerns or videos that you'd like us to make because yeah, we do our best to actually respond to those when we can. Um, but as always, if you are thinking about moving here, if you are thinking about uh, buying a house for the first time, that's what we do. We help first time home buyers and relocators. It's truly, it's like, it's what we do all the time. And we help a ton of folks like yourself. So get a hold of us however you can. You can go to our website, to the twin cities.com. We have a contact form there. You can fill it out. It's a piece of cake. It'll take you literally 30 seconds. Or you can shoot us an email directly to info at to the twin cities.com. Uh, they lead to the same exact inbox. So it doesn't really matter, but it's just kind of up to you, you know, what way feels like less friction to reach out. And as always, thanks for watching. As you exit the video, if you have not done so yet, shame on you. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to get notified. <laughs> not shame on you. Maybe it's the first time you're here. Welcome. Why would I be so rude? And I would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment again about whatever. Or, you know, you can just type, thanks for hurting your back, dude. Thanks for sitting on a stool for so long to make this video. I'd appreciate that. Um, I'll be okay though. So thanks for your concern. If you've made it this far, thank you. You are the best. You are the goat. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.